hello everybody i am uh, bj williams i am making this can i be vulnerable um video for me to be honest with you um <laughs> it's my own selfish reasons but my my hope for it is is whoever's out there watching it um find somebody that they can be vulnerable with as well um i've been wanting to do this for a minute just didn't know how and it finally hit me a couple weeks ago so um it's just a black grown black man being vulnerable with uh, a few things in his life so here we go um so what led me to therapy uh there's a few points that i can start at but i think i'll start at uh the day that I decided that I needed individual therapy, I was actually in couples therapy with uh, my girlfriend at the time. And couples therapy was going well, as well as it could. But it was then that I realized like, yo, ultimately this is not gonna work because I have healing to do individually. And there's no way in hell that I would ever be able to be in this fully, happily, with all my tools if I don't go heal over here. And so one day it just hit me and I was like, yeah, I gotta go. And so I, I left that relationship and like a week later, I was in individual therapy. Back that up, she used to, um, back that up, my, my, my older brother committed suicide. Uh, Memorial Day, four years ago and Suicide is, is, you know, finding out a family member committed suicide is one thing. Um, being on the phone with that person for two hours, telling there's going to be a right is a totally different thing. And <laughs> I've been in some pressured situations, but I don't think you don't know pressure until you're trying to what you think is saving somebody, saving somebody's life. And that was a huge that was my catalyst. I've had a funeral to go to every year since 1998. It's a lot of death. And my, my girlfriend at the time said, you know what, BJ, death follows you. And it's a very scary thing. I don't know what to do about that. I don't, I've never been to war. I don't do, I don't do drugs, I don't deal drugs. I don't gang bang. I don't live a violent lifestyle. And some of the people that have passed, uh, it's been nature, it's been natural, it's been, you know, old age, and I can deal with that. You've lived a full life, I'm not mad at that. Um, some of it has been tragic. I've had a few people commit suicide accidentally. I've had people die violently. I've had people, some have been close family, close friends. Some have been slightly distant family and other people that I knew really well. It's been, um, so death was, and, and death is the reason why I'm so defensive. I let people in. And if you get too close, I'll kick you out. And it's just my defense mechanism. And so what I thought I was doing is like, all right, I thought that I was handling these losses pretty well. Like, you know, someone someone died, I'd cry for sure. But then I'm like, yeah, all right, life goes on X, Y, and Z. I thought that I was dealing with it pretty well. I was always, you know, always had outlets. I had sports, you know, I played college ball, ran college track. So I always had some kind of outlet, but that's physical. I didn't necessarily deal with it emotionally or as mentally as well as I thought I could. Um, and speaking of sports, concussions. It's a huge thing now, but I, I remember waking up not remembering a lot of stuff. And now I get absent-minded, I forget things. Like I, it'll just be the most random thing. And it scares me. And so with therapy, it's an ability to, so I got into therapy because of that. Um, you know, my mom died when I was 16. She just had a stroke one day. I mean, that's just what happened. She was an alcoholic, so she was slowly killing herself anyway. And as a adolescent boy, I don't really know much about that. Like, I don't know how to help. I don't know how to help her get help, you know. Um, and for a long time, I, grown up BJ, had a hard time forgiving adolescent BJ for something he had no control over. I felt like I could help. Or I felt like I should have been enough for her to help herself. And I didn't understand how addiction works. I didn't understand how alcoholism works. I didn't understand how it can be a drug. Um, 
until a few years ago when I got into therapy. So those things led me to seeking out a therapist. And it's been dope ever since, man. It's, it's been hard. It's not easy. Um, but it works. How has healing impacted my relationship with others? I've, <laughs> I've lost some people. Let me say I've lost. I've actually stepped away from some people. Not because they were toxic for me, but because I was somewhat toxic, toxic to them. And, and I wasn't given my full, and this is friendships and relationships. I, I, and so in my healing, I've realized in one relationship specifically that it would never work until I got healed. So I had to walk away from that. Um, she was uh, a dope person, but it would have never worked. It had gotten worse. It would have gotten worse and worse. And, and so I've, I've walked away from some people um, that I was not being um, given my all to. And that, like I said, that's some friendships and that's some relationships as well. So in that manner, um, that's what healing is done. At the same time, on the, excuse me, on the other hand, I've, it strengthened my relationship with, with, um, with other people in my life that, that have um, you know, just strengthened some relationships in others. That's all. What are your weaknesses? What are, what are you still in development? I'm extremely defensive. <laughs> and I only just recognized this like recently. Um, my defense system, my, my defense mechanism is it's not purposeful. It's, it's a reaction to events in my life, just like anything else. We've all gone through something and we choose different ways to, to cope with it or to defend ourselves because as human beings, we're taught to keep ourselves safe. That's just innate. Um, so I'm extremely defensive. And to me, that's, that's a weakness. I don't have to be defensive. Um, well, let me take this back. Keep your defense up, but let there be a bridge or a door to let some folks in that mean you no harm or, or, or once they're in, keep them. In. Okay, so you've been pretty vulnerable thus far. What now? Hopefully somebody sees it and, and they find somebody they can be vulnerable with. So yeah, I've been vulnerable up until this point and what now is, is whoever's out there watching it, you guys find somebody I want you guys, you know, I, I hope you guys would seek therapy. If you can't afford it, there's plenty of um, free options. There's group counseling. There's, they have, you know, um, 1-800 numbers. There's online stuff. There's, you know, there's church groups that not necessarily the religious aspect of it, but there is a counseling aspect to it that you can seek. So there's plenty of options. Uh, students, you can go to your school counselor. They also have outside sources as well. So my, what now is that, Hopefully somebody sees it and says, you know what, he did it. And I'm going to do it too. You don't have to post it. Don't make a video. I personally, it's, this is not even why I'm doing this video. I'm doing this video because this is something that I've wanted to do. Um, but I'm not saying once you do it, go make a video. If you want to, by all means, share. Um, but if you don't, you don't have to. It's your own personal journey. So do it personally.